This episode of Jack is brought to you by Weaver Leather. So three days ago when I worked him on video, and for the last two days in between, I worked on the rope around his middle, because I'd like to get to the point where I saddle him. And when we're talking about saddling him, a couple of things that really bother them about being saddled, one is the pressure around their middle, and the other is the saddle kind of flopping around up there. And so I've been working on this. He was a little resistant to the pressure around his middle at first. But now you can see that he's pretty good with it. He doesn't really bother him. I can pull pretty hard. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to sack him out with this bareback pad a little bit. I started this the day after filming and realized that I probably should have done some of this on the film because he was really sensitive about having anything swung around him. You can still see he gets a little nervous about it. I'm going to rub it on him, but I did a lot of having to follow him around with it and sack him out because he was really quite surprisingly reactive to the idea of something moving alongside of him. He's so confident in the swimming pool and those things that I was a little bit surprised that he was that shy about it. But then the more I thought about it, I thought, you know, when, th when a lot of stuff starts swinging around him, it hasn't always been good. Because if you watch any footage of popcorn kicking at him, that's what it looks a lot like. So I think he's just a little bit uptight about what it means. So he hasn't done anything aggressive, he's just tried to get away. And if you watch, when he gets near other horses, he tends to say, slightly offensive things, and they tend to drive him away. So I think that's where it's coming from, is that he's just a little bit unsure what it meant. Because eventually, just like with the ball, where he eventually figured out, oh, the ball is the reward, or the swimming pool, he figured out that this swinging around is okay. So he's getting pretty quiet to it. And I would much rather swing this around than the saddle. Swinging the saddle around is my second least favorite thing to do because I really need to do more upper body work because it's just so heavy and I like to saddle them from both sides and do a lot of on and off with the saddle that I'm going to show you here in a little bit. But it's so much easier if I prep the horse by doing all the training with this bareback pad because it's a lot lighter to swing around. Makes a different noise has a different feel. He can tell the difference between when I'm petting him and when I'm rubbing this, has a different feel. Leave it on there, come to the other side. So Jack has had the rope around his middle, but he's never actually had any, a, a cinch on of any sort. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to hang that cinch on there, and then I'm going to press it over and see if that ring, if this middle ring on the cinch is about in the middle of his belly, which it is. It's just a tick on my side over there on the off side. So I'm going to come around here. I'm going to get my rope kind of organized because he has jumped towards me a couple times at the end, not in a bad way, but when he, he thinks about being done, he thinks about turning and facing me. So I'm thinking if I'm gonna cinch him up and have anything go wrong, one of the ones I don't want to go wrong is I don't want him turning to face me and running me over because he's scared of what's strapped on his back. So there's the girth on for the first time, but it, it's fairly loose, but I'm gonna drive him forward and send him around because sometimes when they tighten up their muscles, it just feels a little different. Now I've done a lot of my homework in that he's had the rope around his middle quite a bit. So he's pretty accustomed to that, so this should not be a huge change. I'm watching to see how much he's kind of looking over his back. Not too big a deal. We'll lope, because this is the first time anything's been on his back except for that rope running over him. Inside turn. Send him the other direction. I'm 
Lope again. All is good. I'm going to tighten it up a little bit more. Now I'm going to stand here for just a minute. I'm going to take this stick and string and go up over his neck like I've done before as kind of a reward to let him know I'm not going to do anything, but I'm going to let it wrap over that pad so it's going to feel just a little bit different. That landed kind of funny, didn't it? Different sound right there. Really different sound when I pulled the string off from there. But he's okay with it now, on second thought. That is a strange noise. What's interesting also here is that you'll notice today, he's been keeping me more on this offside, which is exactly opposite of what we saw in week one. In week one, he really, really wanted me on the onside. And now I've done so much work that he's actually kind of swung like a pendulum to where he's trying to keep me on this side over here. And to me, this is a good sign because it shows me that he's gonna balance out pretty well. He's not consistently just scared of me being over here. He's actually putting me on this offside. I mentioned earlier that there are two things the horses are hesitant about when you are saddling them. And so the, the, those two things are the stirrups flopping on their sides and kind of bouncing where our leg's going to, and the girth pressure. And I've done a lot of stuff to get him used to the girth pressure. I've done the rope several days. I've done it in several positions. I've done it standing still. I've done it moving. And now I've even put the bareback pad on him. What I'd like to get him used to is the idea of pressure on his sides that doesn't really move him, that doesn't scare him, because I, I need him to be okay with those stirrups bouncing up and down. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually use the ball to show him that idea. He's been pretty quiet with the ball. If he wasn't, it'd be a great time to just continue the training with the ball because he really needs to be quiet to all this stuff before he's safe to saddle. I've seen horses saddled without being real confident and sometimes they smash themselves all into pieces on these round pen panels. Because if they're coming around and they're scared, and they're so scared that they're just running for their life, they'll smash into a panel and hit it. What I'm going to do now is I'm bouncing this. You saw he was a little funny with his head at first, tossing it up and down. At some point, I'm going to be almost in this jumping up and down position when I go to mount up, because it's gonna, I kind of hop on one foot a little bit while I mount. And then I'm going to end up up high. So this ball does a good job of representing the same stuff I've been doing when I've been jumping. But then I'm going to go ahead and bounce it off his side. You saw him kind of raise his ear up and be like, well, that was kind of strange. She must have lost control of that for just a second. So I'm back around. Now he's a little more nervous. Do you see how just that one bounce made him move, move his head, sidestep with his feet? I'm going to come around. I'm going to bounce it off this side because he was standing still. He's standing there thinking, oh, okay, that was unusual, but it didn't actually hurt. He'd been contemplating what happened earlier. You can see his eye, you can see his ear. Bounce it again. And so pretty quickly, because he is a pretty confident young stallion, he's figuring out that the ball's not actually hurting him. And this ability to bounce it off of his side like that, the more I can get it, sorry, that was a loss of control, Jack. The more I can get him comfortable with that, it makes sense that he would be more comfortable when I saddle him. So around to this side, maybe I'll walk up and pet him. So now I'm bouncing the ball and petting him and you can see he got a little bit stiff, a little tight, raised his head up a little bit because he doesn't understand. He's trying to figure out, is she asking me to go somewhere? What does the ball mean? I don't understand. So I'm just trying to do more of that idea of him multitasking. I'm not gonna force him to stand still, I'm just gonna follow him. There he's just that little bit tight. Now I'm rubbing, bouncing.
one bounce. One bounce looks like about all he can handle right now because if I do more than that, I think he's gonna really think about moving, which he's trying to be respectful when he moves away from that pressure. There's a lot of places that we've told this young horse to move away from pressure, but that's why I'm gonna take my time here and show him that there are exceptions to that rule. So when that stirrup starts bouncing, he doesn't just start running wildly. So this is the heavy part of teaching the horse about the saddling. I like to put the saddle on and off from my horses quite a bit from both sides. I think you can teach them how to handle a rider possibly falling off by doing some of the exercises I'm about to do, but they do require upper body strength, so it does turn into a workout. So with Jack here, I'm gonna hold him on kind of a, a loose, line or I can even go ahead and drop him and turn him loose because that's why I've done all this training about him staying here with me is so that if I need to I can drop that line and still walk around him and know that he's here because he's mentally here not because I'm physically holding him here. So you may see me switch back and forth between holding the line or dropping the line because hopefully you've seen through the training that he's getting pretty comfortable about just staying near me. So I'll walk around from side to side and just rub the saddle on him. Just kind of move it around and I let him sniff it when I'm coming around the front. If he wants to sniff it, that's fine. Come around to this side. Rub him. Then when I plan on throwing it over his back, I am going to go ahead and just take this rope and just loop it over. It would just pull free. It's not wrapped around my arm because I don't want anybody to get hurt, but he may think about moving and maybe jumping forward or something. And if he were to do that, I'd like to be able to guide him back to me. There you can see him kind of looking over his shoulder because he's seeing me on this side, but he saw that stirp and everything go over onto the other side. So now the saddle's sitting on him. I'm rubbing it sounds different, feels different, and then I'm gonna go ahead and just pull it right back off from him. So he doesn't have to have that question in his mind, is this a permanent thing that's going to stay on me for the rest of my life? I kind of answer that question right off the bat by saying, nope, it's gonna go on, and then it's gonna come right back off. Then I'm gonna come around, arrange myself, and do the same thing from this side. Throw the saddle up there. I'm prepared to pull his head towards me, if he were to get surprised, pet the saddle a little, rub the saddle. Now you'll notice that I've saddled him without a pad and there's no girth holding the saddle on right now. I'm gonna ask him to go ahead and walk. He's getting sticky about leaving me because he really wants to figure out how to be done and He's always done when he's with me. So I'm gonna ask him to move a little bit right there. And I'm actually okay with the idea that if he got really scared right now, that the saddle would come off. I know some people could argue that, you know, if the saddle comes off, you're gonna teach him to dump it. I'm gonna argue that if he's that scared, the saddle needs to come off and I need to go back and add some more steps. While I'm talking about adding steps, you should notice that this saddle is missing a major component of a regular saddle. And what it's missing is the stirps because I had another little filly that I was starting last week and she was a little bit jumpy and sensitive in her sides. And so it made sense to me that if I wanted to create even one more step, I went ahead and pulled the stirps off. So it's one less thing to flap. I don't do that, actually I've never done that that I remember until just this last filly. So the training does get tailored to each horse. I just left them off for this one. I'll put them on eventually. But it's just another way that you can see how many steps you can really break it down to if you want to. Okay, Jack, that part's pretty good. Let's move on to the next step. So the next thing I'm gonna do is a little unusual, but I still like the idea of it. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stand here and I'm gonna grab this saddle and I'm gonna pull it off to the side. 
I'm gonna step back just a little bit and I'm gonna pull that and I'm gonna let the saddle fall on the ground. And then I'm gonna do the same thing from the other side. And the reason I'm doing this is because I think a saddle falling from the horse's back sounds reasonably like a rider falling from a horse's back. Some of the biggest wrecks you'll hear are when, when the rider falls off and their foot gets stuck in the stirrup of the saddle and then the horse is scared of that dragging, scared of that falling, and then the horse starts running and people have been drugged to death like that. So I think if you can prepare these horses for the shocking idea of something falling off their back or something dragging, it's, it's a really great idea. I know we had a horse once that we trained years ago that the man lived by a railroad track and months later after the horse had left training with us he was giving a lesson and he was out in the middle of the arena giving a lesson on this horse a train came by which distracted the horse some and at the same time he had picked up a rock out of the arena and he decided to toss it to the side well the horse had so much going on with the rock being tossed the rider on its back and the train going by that it, it jumped and it only spooked about 10 feet it just kind of squirted forward but the rider fell off and the horse turned around and looked at it because we do all this training preparing them to not be scared by something falling off I've seen other horses that have had you know no training in this and the first time a rider falls off you have to go back and spend months trying to recondition that horse to the idea that you know things might go wrong things might fall off you'll still be okay so I'd rather prevent it in the beginning get my rope right get my saddle right toss it back up on Now I have a rope here that I'm going to hook onto the saddle any which way I can. And I'm going to ask him to move forward. And then in motion, I'm going to do the same thing I just did. And let that kind of scare him and let him get the idea that you know, hey, that slipping feeling, that falling, that sound, it's not a big deal. Good response, Jack. I'm just going to let gravity take it. He can feel it going. And there you saw where they can think about cow kicking. I've had horses that when it was slipping off, that they've reached up with that hind leg and just blasted it out through the air and you thought I am really glad that was not me but Jack's doing great okay let's add the pad so I've switched girths now and up until this point Jack has never been saddled and I've been pretty free to get the saddle off his back Right here is one of the stickiest situations when you're starting a young horse and that's getting the saddle tightened the first time because you're not sure what they're going to do although I've kind of hedged my bet by doing all the work with the pad all the work with the rope so I've got a good idea of what he's going to do but I need to get it tight enough that if he does start bucking like he does with the rope that it won't slip underneath him because that would be a train wreck that would not be fun to get into. So it's a, it's a delicate thing because I want to get it tight enough to make sure it's not going to fall off if he gets uncomfortable, but I also don't need it super tight. I'm not going to mount. And so you can kind of see he's got a good look, slightly sleepy, not really worried. I'm just trying to get to this one hole right here, and that's where I'm going to stop. And it's just a touch maybe a touch tighter I couldn't if I went to the next hole looser I wasn't sure it was going to stay but because of where the holes are I wasn't sure that I that I needed to go to this next one but it's a touch tighter maybe but I know it's going to keep the saddle on and now again the most important thing for me here is to keep us both out of trouble so he looks pretty uptight but you can still see that he's kind of looking to me for guidance and that's where having that halter on him helped me bump him and bring him back you can still see he's soft in his face 
I'm going to reverse directions with him. I'm going to say, hey, I know something's distracting, but I'm still in here. And he's being very good about listening to the fact that I'm still here. So this is what I mean when I say that by having the rope on him, I can help keep him safe. If I've done all my homework right, even when things start going wrong, he's going to pay attention to what I'm doing. So now that he's kind of mentally a little bit back here, I'm not crazy about being standing straight in front of him, especially when I start moving him. So I'm going to step to the side. I'm going to be tapping up there, saying, you need to go away. You need to go forward. Now that was interesting because he did one big graceful buck, not that I want to ride it, but then he looked directly to me. And so again, he's telling me that even though he's being irritated by this, he's very interested in what I have to say. So somehow I've managed to get him to the point where he values my opinion, enough to where he's looking to me for some guidance. What the heck's going on here? There's something stuck to my back. Move his shoulder. I don't want him to jump onto me. Move him forward. You can tell he has a big hump in his back. He's kind of arching his back up because of the way the saddle's bouncing up and down in the back. Because he's just really tight. You can see him starting to relax there. His stride's getting a little bit more stretched out. Head drops a little bit lower. Again, he's most likely to buck in the lope. So when I lope him, that's when you're more expecting it. It's got more of that rocking horse motion. There, a little swishing of the tail. He's a little irritated by the saddle. So he'll wear this. The next few times I work him before we video again, my goal will be to have the bridle on him and have the saddle on him. The bridle will be hanging there without the reins. I should have had it in him today, but I forgot. And so my goal will be to just keep getting him more comfortable than what we've already done. Those are real playful, kind of irritated. Do I really have to keep this thing on me? They're not, he's not really, really upset and getting unglued. He's just kind of experimenting with whether or not he can get that thing off his back. Right, Jack? Yep. Still not scared. That's a good thing. So I've got a couple choices here. I can either be done or I can tighten up the saddle and keep going. I actually don't want to tighten it up. I'm, I'm messing around with it here, wiggling it. It's pretty tight, but it's obviously not tight enough to keep it from rolling right now with the arch in his back. But I'm pretty happy with what he's done. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bend him just a little bit in the halter, lunge him just a few more times, and then we're going to call it a day. So right now I'm going to step around to the side and just like I will do eventually with the bridle, I'm going to come back here, I'm going to take hold of his halter and I'm going to put just a little bit of pressure and see if I can get him to tip his nose just a little bit more towards me, like that, and I'd like him to not move his feet while he does it. So I'm going to do it again. I released when he bent his nose but his feet were moving. I'm going to hold a little bit of pressure right here, holding. He's got his head a little bit bent but his feet are moving. I'm holding holding. There his head was bent and his feet stopped. I let go. My goal is to eventually get him to where I can bend him all the way around to the saddle. This side he's bending a little bit better. There he bent, didn't move his feet. I let go. Walk around. Grab hold of this side. A little bit of pressure. He moved his head. I released. A little bit of pressure. He moved his head. I released. A little bit of pressure. He moved his head. I released and his feet didn't move. I'm starting to teach him a parking brake that I'm gonna use when I mount him. And if I need to stop him, I'm starting to train him that when I bend your head to the left or right, if you stand real still, I'll let go. 
And that's another exercise I'm going to work on in the next few days before we video again. Bend his head around. His feet didn't move. I let go. And that's going to be one of the things that's going to keep me safe when I get on him. Very good. Tune in next time as the conversation between Stacy and Jack continues.